Talent Ready. My name is Nyla Watkins. I am a coach at Woodrow Wilson Senior High School for Girls Novice Rowing. Rowing is a water sport. It involves oars and a boat. It can be done by one person moving that boat, two people moving that boat, four or eight. That's the sport of rowing. Uh, there's other types of Aquatic sports that involve boats, but rowing specifically has a maximum of eight rowers and a coxswain. Um, it can be competitive, it can be something that's casual, um, leisure, recreation, uh, but my background is in competitive rowing. As far as I know, rowing goes back uh, as far as to the Egyptian times. Um, and then even more recently than that, the competitive nature of rowing um, originates in Europe and from there into the Ivy League schools here in the States to where it is now, where it's um, accessible to everybody. I first got involved in rowing when I saw the 1992 Olympics. It was a bird's eye view of a race on television that summer. And then that fall, my junior high school, when I was in ninth grade, started a program for rowing. And knowing what I liked on television, I joined the team immediately. And I continued rowing through graduating college in 2000, so a total of eight years. For competitive rowers, the training is very rigorous. Rowing is a year-round sport. There are competitive seasons for every season of the year. So there is training in the spring, training in the summer, training in the winter, and training in the fall. I practiced rowing five days a week. Um, and then when we got into the high school and collegiate level, it was six days a week and sometimes twice a day. And then during the winter training sessions when there was no school, or the spring break trainings when there was no school breaks off, it was two or three times a day. I have a few special achievements in my experience as a rower. Um, I rowed at Syracuse University. I am a three-time conference champion for rowing there. I um, have also rowed, rowed on the uh, Atlanta Olympic course as a junior competitive rower, um, the club that I was in uh, went to the U.S. National Rowing um, Regatta and I medaled there. I did consider rowing as a professional career. Uh, I wanted to be on the 2000 Olympic rowing team when I was um, a, a rower in college. Um, I did change my mind about that because I realized that I wasn't as passionate about the entire scene of rowing as I believed was necessary to want to go all the way with the sport. I got into coaching because I had free time on my hands. You know, coming from a rowing background when I had to juggle school and multiple practices and homework, um, I came to realize that when I had a full-time job, I had a lot more time on my hands that I knew what to deal with. So I looked into getting something on the side and one of my teammates from high school is actually a coach at the high school uh, now that I coach at. Believe it or not, I coached, I coach now at the high school that I am an alum of. And he kept on encouraging me and pushing me and advising me and leading me into consider coaching. 
uh, years and years of it, but I believed that I was burnt out from the sport. But something clicked in my mind and I decided that I wanted to use rowing to um, propel me into other uh, walks of life. So to use what I have to get what I want. Um, and now I am the girls novice coach at Wilson Senior High School in Washington, D.C. But prior to coaching the novice girls this year, I was the assistant coach to the varsity boys for three years. Big difference between varsity boys and freshman girls, but um, I'm excited for the uh, potential that these girls have for this season. The rowing scene in the Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. area is growing and the, there's rowing on the high school levels and there's a lot of collegiate rowing between Georgetown, between GW, um, even schools in Virginia and the University of Maryland, Baltimore area has more teams. There are also rowing clubs. We have a few um, elite rowers from the area who are competing for national levels to be on the national team with um, either the sculling team or the um, rowing in eights or fours, and um, it's growing. Um, the, I would say that um, compared to 10 years ago, um, it's grown maybe 100%, maybe it's doubled since then, and uh, I would say there's a new team on the scene every year at least. I truly believe that the number of African Americans in the sport is slim to none. Granted, there are a few very elite ones. Akil Abdullah uh, is a, an Olympic elite scholar. There was David Banks, who competed in 2008 Olympics in China for a four, and I do believe he medaled there. And before that, there was one female um, black rower um, long before that. So uh, I do feel that the lack of numbers of us in the sport has a lot to do with a lack of exposure. Um, we tend to stick to what's accessible. So if that's basketball, if that's football, when all you needed is a field and a ball, with basketball you need a ball and a hoop, even with track where you just have to run anywhere. Um, I do believe that we um, get nervous when it comes to water sports, um, uh, but I believe that if it was just the tool of exposure, of accessibility, of, of leading these kids to say there's more out there than the typical sports that maybe you're expected to play and excel in. Um, with the Winter Olympics going on right now, you know, you don't see us in figure skating or in speed skating or any winter sports out there. And I just don't think that that has anything to do with the lack of ability, but much more so the lack of accessibility. And we do know that when things are made accessible, then doors are made wide open and um, the numbers change. If I could make the sport more diverse. Uh, one of the first things I would do is work with the youth. There are several programs going on right now that pull youth from neighborhoods that don't necessarily even know that the sport of rowing exists and makes it available at their footsteps. Uh, the U.S. Rowing Association has a conference every year where we bring coaches and athletes together to bounce off ideas of how to make it possible, but I would definitely change the way of thinking for young people. Um, there are more options, there are more sports, and there are more um, um, possibilities than what is necessarily just at your front door. And then the other thing is, I need kids to know that even if they choose a sport that's not the most popular, it's still fine. It, may, it might make you stick out like a sore thumb, but so, but so what? What it does is it brings uh, more exposure to what you're doing. And uh, once more people know about it, then more people have interest in it and more people will excel in it. 
the, the best advice I can give to an aspiring rower is to go for it. Uh, there's a saying among us, among us coaches that says it's too much hard work for you to spend as much time as you do and as much energy as you do, as much blood, sweat, and tears as you do and not like the sport. So first of all, like what you're doing. Enjoy the time. You know, enjoy the friends that you're going to be spending so much time with um, and, and don't let that be a hindrance in moving forward. If you enjoy it, by all means, go for it. But if you um, feel like your time could be spent doing something else, that's fine because I tell you, it's a huge, huge commitment. Did I answer every question in a full sentence? Because I feel like I might not have. The, I lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. There was something else I was gonna say. <laughs>